We're looking at default transitions today and the keyboard shortcuts to apply those directly in the timeline. Shortcuts are incredibly important uh, with all pieces of software that you're going to use sort of in earnest and uh, Premiere is a really good example of that. So if we get a clip in here, initially this is just some stock footage and what you'll notice in your audio transitions and in your video transitions is that there's always one highlighted in blue and that's your default transition and that one can you can kind of get to that one much more easily than others and it's likely to be the one that you're going to need because uh, well you can decide what it's, which one it's going to be but in the case of audio constant power is probably the best choice in most scenarios and a cross dissolve is a pretty popular choice in most scenarios too but if you right click and do this and set selected you know you can right click and do set selected as the default to change it but assuming that these are the two that you want we can now apply those in the timeline without having to go back here and drag them in and moving around with the mouse it's all about sort of getting your hands on the keyboard and so if we press C and we cut our clip here and then go to our ripple edit tool and find a suitable place to change to. So we'll do a cross, we'll do a switch to there. Go back to selection tool with V. And now when we hold down control, what we see is as we move it across here, you'll see that that cursor changes as it hits the kind of join, joining point between the two clips. And then it goes to the other clip. So, and just as it's at that point, if we just click, you'll see that the, the, uh, the end of one clip and the start of the next are now highlighted. And if we press Control D and then Control Shift D, and then we zoom in a bit so we can do that with Z and just drag over here, you'll see that we now have our two default transitions applied directly on there. It's really, really easy to do. So if we move our timeline to here, go to, and, and we're gonna, let's say we're gonna chop this clip again. So we do cut the clip there, go to V, press Control, select those, do Control D and do Control Shift D. There we go, we've got our two default transitions straight in with no kind of backwards and forwards movement. And of course, you know, depending on whether you, you might be moving around the, 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 uh, the timeline with a sort of wheel or some other tool, and it might make it even better for you. But I mean, I am obviously using the mouse to move around the timeline in this case. But it's a really, really useful feature, and one that if you don't use already, I would definitely start using. As far as which defaults you pick, well, it is up to you, but I would stick to fix transitions usually in a, in a piece. I think it would look weird. Uh, it would look a bit home video-ish if you suddenly had sort of uh, random sort of transitions and weird motion transitions uh, mixed with cross dissolves. In most cases, I never use anything but cross dissolve, dip, dip to black and dip to white, sometimes dip to white to provide some sort of uh, timed impact or something like that. But uh, there you go. I mean, super simple. As I say, select a point on the timeline, press C, to slice it or wherever those wherever you happen to be go back to v hold down control click on the two the, the points between the two clips press control d and then control shift d and you can change what they're assigned to and you get your default transitions straight in there thanks for watching